you're listening to Breach Your Mind, a podcast dedicated to you and helping you navigate those rough waters of life and gain more perspective on more complicated issues. Hey guys, welcome back to Breach Your Mind. I hope everything is going well for you today. Today's episode is going to be covering a topic that's a little more sensitive, one that doesn't get enough positive conversation about. I say positive conversation and then term of meaning healthy, a healthy conversation. The topic was specifically requested, so that's the reason why we're covering it today. <coughs> and uh, it's going to be about suicide. I know for many, that might immediately make you want to turn this off, not listen to it. And, and I understand that feeling. I really do. This is not a topic that was talked about a great deal whenever I was coming up as a child, and even today in modern times that it is talked about, it's not done so in a a healthy manner. Um, There's some TV shows made about it, a bunch of other stuff, but there's no real healthy, real conversation about it. So that's uh, that's what we're hoping to cover today. Now let me start off by saying that I am not a licensed professional, okay? I don't hold any degrees, uh, any licenses or uh, certifications, nothing like that that qualifies me to be able to help somebody with this. <clears throat> that being said, doesn't mean that I don't have anything to offer. Okay, you don't have to hold a degree or a certification or a license to be able to help people. Um, that's just a normal citizen thing to do. But I will caution you that if you or somebody you know is currently going through a situation or currently going through something right now and are considering suicide, let me ask you guys reach out to a professional, okay? Obviously reach out to your normal support structure, but also reach out to a professional. Um, Even if it's not something you want to talk to your normal doctor about or seek a referral for, you can always call the Suicide Prevention Hotline at 1-800-273-8255. Again, that's 1-800-273-8255, and you can reach out to those folks there. They can they can help get you some resources and, and help get, get you past this, okay? So you don't have to become another statistic when it comes to that particular situation. So, in saying all that, I will give you a little background on me as far as why I'm somebody that I guess can help people through tough times as far as dealing with suicide goes. So I've been in public safety for 15 years now and during that 15 years I've covered a variety of situations revolving around suicide. Whether it was someone that was having suicidal ideations and thoughts, whether it was someone who had attempted suicide or unfortunately someone that had completed committing suicide. I've been there from start to finish on all of it, and in 15 years, it's, you know, sadly become something that I'm accustomed to dealing with. I don't know that that's something that people should come accustomed to dealing with, but for whatever reason in our society nowadays, this is this is an avenue that, well, people just take more often than I ever knew they did when I was a kid. That could just be because of my limited exposure, but... I don't know. It just seemed like it'd be more widely known back then. So I don't know what's changed in society to romanticize or, or make suicide such a, an easy thing for people to do nowadays. Along with that 15 years of professional experience, um, I've got my own my own experience, if you will, in the form of exposure. Um, not me per se, but I do have some traumas in my life that have brought suicide into my life and honestly is what set the groundwork for how I handle things professionally nowadays. I was back in my early 20s when my mother decided to take her life. And up until that point, I had no concept of suicide. The only concept that I did have of suicide at that time was the conversations that I would have with my mom. 
um, kind of paint you a little picture of my mom. She was a traditional Southern woman. She really enjoyed cooking and family and everything that I would assume most people would. But she was also somebody that I often describe as someone that would light up a room as soon as she walked in. She was, she was that type of person. As soon as she walked into the room, the room immediately felt warmer. You immediately felt better about yourself. And she seemed to be able to take the dullness off of everything. She was just that kind of person. She was just a lovely person. And somebody that I really grew to idolize in my life. <clears throat> my mom was a single mom, raising two boys. Um, her and my dad separated long before I could ever remember. And it was her raising us. Uh, this isn't taking anything away from my dad at all. <clears throat> but my mom was raising two boys. You know, coming up through the 80s and 90s, that, was, that wasn't exactly an easy thing for a lot of people to do. And there my mom was attacking me. You know, she was doing it. So I really held her in a high esteem. You know, it's very easily to say that she was the center of my world for the vast majority of my life. And when we would have our conversations about suicide, you know, she would always describe it to me in a sense of saying that the person that committed suicide was a coward. They were a chicken. That they took the easy way out. And that was the only concept of it that I had. I didn't have anything else to run off of when it comes to that simply because it's just how mom told me it was and that's what I believe <clears throat> so getting up to my early 20s my mom was going through some things unfortunately I did not know what she was going through but she was going through some things and she made that decision she decided that suicide was the best option for her now remember, when I described her just a minute ago, you know, I pretty much told you she was somebody that brought the sunshine with her, that instantly made you feel better about yourself. <clears throat> so with that and my understanding of the time of suicide or concept of suicide at the time, you can only imagine the confusion that was going through my mind. You know, what would make my mom the, the center of my world become a coward? What would make her become a chicken and take herself out? You know, this, this just didn't, didn't seem right. <clears throat> Following her death, I went into, I call it a three-month depression. I did finally reach out to a, a mental health professional at the VA center and was told that it wasn't depression, it was mourning, and that I was having a problem sleeping, which I understood. Um, but I suffered for about three months with everything on that. During that three-month time period, I wound up letting my personal business, my, my own company, I let it crumble. Um, you know, it didn't mean anything to me to begin with, and it crumbled. Um, that devolved... Um, I really lost touch with the outside world and just kind of let myself start wasting away. After I went to the VA, the VA told me, you know, the VA doc told me that I needed to get some sleep, and that after I wound up getting some sleep, that I'd be able to process things a little better. And I suppose, suppose the doctor was right. Um, was prescribed some sleeping medication, and after about a week, of sleeping, I was able to start dealing things a little better. But the reason I was having such a hard time sleeping wasn't just because I was sad. It was because every time I closed my eyes, I saw my mom. I was confused. You know, I, I would see my mom's auburn hair and the freckles on her face and her reading glasses and that smile that, you know, she was so widely known for amongst our family and friends. And I was just confused and upset. You know, I, I couldn't understand why. And then all these other questions started creeping in. Because, see, I had just spoken on the phone with my mom 30 to 45 minutes before she killed herself. 30 to 45 minutes. And I heard it in her voice then. I knew then that my mom wasn't okay. You know, I, I could hear how upset she was in her voice. And I even asked her, I said, Mom, are you okay? 
She said, yes, son, I'm fine. And this is toward the end of the conversation. So she said, I'm fine. She goes, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and let you go. I said, okay, mama. She said, I love you. I said, I love you too, mama. And then we hung up. 35, 30 to 45 minutes later is when I get the phone call telling me that I need to get to my mom's house that there'd been an accident. That was tough. You know? Sitting here going through all these different emotions and all these different questions and here I am in my early 20s trying to figure out why I couldn't stop my mom from committing suicide. Because it's you see, as much as my mom meant to me, I was her baby boy. You know, she told me this all the time. She'd tell anybody I was her baby boy. You know, in her eyes, while you know, I would say that she went easier on my brother than she did on me at times, in my mom's eyes, I couldn't do any wrong. At least that's how I understood it. So I'm filled with all these questions is, you know, is there something else I could have done? Is it my fault? You know, was it my fault that my mom killed herself because I didn't go the extra step? I didn't ask that that extra time if she was okay or what was wrong, you know, why she was sad. <clears throat> I didn't ask that question. I just asked her if she was okay, and she said yeah, and that she loved me. So I had a bunch of regret after she died as well, thinking that there was more I could have done. So I'm sad, I'm, I'm angry, I'm confused, I'm full of regret because I'm sitting here thinking in my early 20s that there was something more I could have done to have helped my mom. And it wasn't until I got into public safety that I was able to really start coming away from a lot of those feelings that I'd been having. <clears throat> See, I use my mom's story, my story, as one to help people understand that I understand what it's like to be a survivor of someone that's committed suicide. I understand as a human being and someone that has had my ups and downs and has had my own bouts of sadness. I understand what it's like to be at the, the bottom of the pit where light doesn't even reach. So I can understand why somebody would make the decision that taking their own life is the answer. Now don't get me wrong, just because I can understand why people would think this, it's not an affirmation for it. It's not a confirmation. It's not permission. You don't have permission to take your own life. Okay? I'm nobody to tell anybody how to live, but I'll definitely speak for your friends and your family and say you don't have that permission. While suicide is a very personal choice that an individual makes, that's not yours. At least it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be your decision to make on whether or not you get to die. Now maybe that sounds self-centered. Maybe that sounds... I don't know. But coming from somebody that's lived through a family member who's killed themselves. Guys, you have no idea what you're putting on somebody when you make that decision. Okay? I know it seems like you may be getting rid of your pain, getting rid of your hurt, getting away from a situation that's, that's causing you a lot of pain, but you're not. You're really not. All you're doing is passing that pain on to someone else. You're passing your emotional responsibility on to someone that you say you love. Because whether you want to admit it or not you are loved in this world you're loved by your family you're loved by your friends there's somebody that loves you there's somebody that cares about you and by you making that decision to take your own life you're passing that emotional pain onto them and how is that right 
If we love somebody, how is it right that we pass that emotional pain on to them? How do we make it their responsibility? How do we make that their cross to bear? How do we have the right to do that? Do we honestly believe that we are so indignant, so self-gratifying, that we have that right? That it should be okay? That for some reason it should be acceptable? I don't think we are. And I think if you're listening to this right now, you're not the kind of person that believes you are either. I believe that if you're the kind of person that took a moment to stop and think about what your decision was going to do. I think if you were the type of person that thought about the pain you were about to cause your loved ones, I don't think you would do it. I can't believe that. I can't believe that someone that says they love someone else would intentionally go out and hurt them in a manner such as this. Now, don't get me wrong. If you're somebody that's considering suicide or, God forbid, you're, you're thinking about it right now, understand that I understand what it's like to hurt that bad, okay? I do. I know what it feels like to feel like you're at the bottom of that pit and you find you've got no other way out. But all around you, you've got a way out of that pit. There's hardly any situations that we face in this world today that there's not a solution for. They may not be the best solutions, but there's a solution for it. If it's a money thing, you can make more money. One way or another, you can make more money. If it's love, you can find somebody else to be in your life. If it's the loss of a family member, well, that family member didn't die simply because they wanted you to hurt. That pain will never go away, but that pain will get easier to manage as time goes on. If you're suffering from some kind of a medical issue, there's ways of easing the pain from that. There's ways of making it so that you can live out the rest of your days as best you possibly can. I know this all seems like rose-colored glasses kind of talk, but guys, I've been there. I know what it's like. It's not just my mom that I lost to suicide. I've lost other family members to suicide. I have other family members try to commit suicide. I've cleaned up my own family. I know what it's like. I know the pain and the trauma and the heartache and everything that comes in between that's left behind after something like that happens. And if you're one of my family members that has lived through this with me, please understand this is not any sign of, of blaming or shaming or anything like that. I love you. I love you for everything that you've done. And I love you for fighting through the things that you fought through. But guys, I'm here to tell you, I know what it's like to be on the other side. I know what it's like to say that I'm a survivor of someone that's committed suicide. It's not a club I ever wanted to be in. It's not a club I hope anybody ever has to be in, but I know it's going to happen. I'm not so naive to think that by making a simple podcast or you know, having that one conversation with somebody that I'm going to stop it from happening anywhere else around me. But I can try. And just like the young man that I spoke of uh, back in my introduction, the one man that really kind of was an inspiration for me starting the podcast. He showed me what kind of impact I can truly have on a person's life. And all I was doing was my job that day. It's not taken away, you know, that there was real emotion involved as far as when I was talking with him. But I'm sure I left his house and I went right on to the next call. And years later, he finds me on a football field and somewhere in southeast Georgia and tells me that one thing that I said to him rings true with him and that he holds on to. 
He told me that what I told him that night was instead of trying to find all the reasons in the world to kill himself, he should find one reason every day not to. Instead of thinking of all the reasons to kill himself, find one reason each day not to. Now this is a phrase I have said multiple times to many people, and I never knew how much it actually impacted them. But this young man walked up to me on this football field and told me that night what an impact it had on his life. That even though he still thought about killing himself on a daily basis, he held on to that one line and he found one reason every day not to kill himself. Such a simple phrase to make such a huge impact on one person's life. Guys, if you're somebody here today that's thought about it, thinking about it, planning on committing suicide, do the one thing that I wish my mom would have done all those years ago. Stop and think about it before you do it. And I don't mean stop and think about it in the terms of dwelling on whatever it is that's caused you to make this decision. Stop and think about who it's going to hurt. Who are you going to pass your pain on to? Who are you going to make carry your emotional baggage? Stop and think about this. You see, I fully believe that my mother was not a selfish person and that if she would have stopped to think long enough about who she was going to leave behind to carry on her pain, she wouldn't have done it. If she would have seen the pain in my eyes and my family's eyes that night, the pain in her grandchildren's eyes when they had to learn that grandma was no more, the pain in her husband's eyes when he had to find her the way that he did. I don't think she'd have done it. I don't think she'd have done it. I can't believe she would have. Not knowing my life, mom my whole life the way I did. For her to see the impact that her death has caused, I don't think she would have done it. I just can't believe that. And I think if you stop and think about it long enough and you think about who you're going to leave behind, who you're going to pass on your emotional strain to, I think maybe then you'll try to think a little bit better about your decision. I think maybe then you'll reach out and you'll ask somebody for that help. At least I'm hoping you will. Guys, I don't know a lot of you. Chances are I don't know most of you. But I do know enough that I don't believe this world's a better place without you in it. Think of all the things that you still have left to accomplish. Think of all the things that you can still help other people with. Think of what can be, not what could have been. Now, guys, I'm going to cover one more aspect of this before I quit bending your ear. But I also think that this is something that needs to be talked about as well. And it's about being a survivor of someone that's committed suicide. Okay? This is obviously something that I'm quite familiar with, being I've had it happen in my life. If you're somebody that's going through it now, or it happens in the future, God forbid. But you're the one left behind after someone has committed suicide. Guys, you're you're going to be flooded with a bunch of questions. You're going to be flooded with a bunch of emotions. Okay? Know now, with all of the questions that you're going to have, you're not likely to ever get a real good answer. Even in situations where there's been a note left behind. Still leaves a whole lot of questions. Because it's a one-sided conversation in that note. It's them saying whatever they wanted to say. 
but it still leaves a whole bunch of questions behind. You know, the questions of why. Was there anything you could have done? Did you miss something? Was there something else you could have done to stop them from committing suicide? Just know now that you're not likely going to get a good answer on that. You can come up with all the answers in the world, but because it's a one-sided conversation, you're not likely to get the answers that you're wanting to hear. You can't have conversations when there's only one side of it talking. And all the emotions you're going to feel, know now that they're all completely normal. Every single emotion you're going to feel is going to be completely normal. The sadness, understandable. The anger, it's going to surprise you. But it's common and it's understandable and it's rightfully placed. All the different variety of emotions you're going to go through. <clears throat> Denial. All of these different emotions, guys, they're 100% they're normal. They're understandable. They're expected. Let them happen. Feel your emotions. Don't let them run your life, but feel your emotions. Go through the, go through the emotions and do what you have to do. Deal with your pain. Don't be somebody that bottles this up and acts like it doesn't hurt and you're stronger and so on and so forth. It, look, it, that macho crap, that's that has its time and place, but not in this, okay? If you're the type of person that you don't want to show emotion in front of other people, that's fine. Wait till you're alone. Wait till you're in a safe place that you can show your emotion and then let it out. Now, if you're somebody that just doesn't have a whole lot of emotions, then so be it. Now, hey, you're more macho than I am, and that's cool. I'm okay with not being that macho. But feel your emotions, guys. Okay? You said, don't let it run your life, but feel them. Go through the steps. Mourn the loss of your loved one. Because that's what it is. It's mourning. And mourning's okay. Morning's how we knew that we love somebody. There's no easy way to get through it. There's no secret. Everybody has their own time frame that they can deal with pain. <clears throat> Everybody has their own ways that they deal with pain. Just do it healthy. Do it healthy and get through it. Because that's why you're a survivor. Because you're able to get through it. You're able to pick up where your loved one wasn't able and keep going. Nothing you're going to feel is wrong. But you have to deal with it. If you don't, you're going to bottle it up, you're going to shove it down, and it's just going to wind up festering and going to make things worse for you. It's going to come out at a time that you didn't want it to come out to where you can't control it. And that's not good at all. So you got to deal with it, guys. Reach out to your family and friends. Reach out to your support structure. Reach out to those that are close to you, that know you best, that are going to be able to sit there and listen to you talk. Not even so much as give you advice. Just sit there and listen to you talk and go through the pain. If you're somebody that's considering suicide, you need to think about those people that I just talked about. Think about those, think about those survivors. Reach out to them. Reach out to me. I'd love to be the one to try to help you get back out of the dark. Just as your family and friends would. Guys, if you're a survivor and you're having a hard time dealing with it, reach out to me. Reach out to your support structure. Any one of us would love to be able to be there and help you get through this. But we can't do anything if you don't let us know. I believe I said it there in my introduction, and if not, I'll say it again now. We can't fix what we don't know is broken. If we don't know it's broke, we can't fix it. And the only way we're going to find it is if you tell us. So reach out and tell us. Let us know what's going on. None of you are in this fight alone. You got a whole army behind you, ready to fight with you. You just got to give us a chance. Guys, like always, I really appreciate your time and I appreciate the chance you've given me to be able to sit here and 
maybe help you out a little bit. And I hope somebody was able to find some inspiration or some kind of guidance here. It's always my honor to be able to help anybody that needs help. And I would ask the same of you, that if you have the chance to give somebody a hand, help them out. You never know what somebody's going through. Give them a hand. Help that someone find just one reason to keep living today. Guys, I believe that pretty much wraps this one up. And as always, I appreciate you, and we'll catch you on the next one. If you or someone you know is considering suicide, contact the Suicide Prevention Hotline at one 800 273 8255 Again, that's 1-800-273-8255. Hey guys, I really appreciate you listening and I hope this episode has been able to shed a little light into your life, or at least give you a little perspective. In fact, you've shared some of your valuable time with me. Absolutely incredible. This podcast is for y'all and it wouldn't be possible without you. So hit me up with any questions or topics you want to hear about and look forward to an upcoming episode. This is an open podcast, so if I can help, hey, that's what I want to do. Let me know. So until next time, be safe. Catch you later.